Hey, what's up everyone? I'm just gonna be uh, setting up my screen real quick. Give me a moment. <clears throat> Okay, so that's working. Okay, I think I'm basically ready to start. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm back. Uh, I'm back uh, at home base in Korea. What's up, Only Water? So let me uh, <laughs> let me see. Is this the right? Is this a good angle? Let me fix this. That's good enough. Yeah, it's forcing me to stand a little close, but for now, this will work. Oh man, I have had a crazy day, crazy couple days. So I'm a little, I'm a little out of it. But um, uh, let's get started. Uh, what's up with you, man? Uh, eh. Quick update from me: I just got back to Korea from Japan, from Kyoto. Uh, now I am. Now I'm sort of settling back into my rhythm. I'm gonna have uh, daily classes starting tomorrow. And uh, what that means is <laughs> I have to have, be prepared for classes for tomorrow and I'm not fully prepared, so I need to do that. But I also have like a Christmas party today and then Oh my God, there's too much stuff going on right now. So actually, I'm kind of overwhelmed today. <laughs> but, uh, you know, in the whole scheme of things, everything is good. You know, I will be prepared for class tomorrow. Uh, I just have to get that done. And uh, and uh, I'm hoping to hear uh, about some of your results. I mean, uh, I know it might be embarrassing to share, but uh, if you if, if if any of you have the uh, the courage to... to, to discuss uh, what happened with your college results and your SAT results, I'd be happy to help you figure out your next steps. Okay, with that, uh, with my little update out of the way, uh, let's go to... Oh, right, I need, to, I need to do this. Actually, I probably need to do this announcement during the stream today just because I'm so behind on my schedule. Oh, dude. Jay, what's up? I feel like I've seen your name a long time ago. And then this is your first time seeing the name again. C-M-U-E-D. Wait, I don't know what SCS is. C-M-U-S-E-S. But I'm going to guess computer science. That it is. Okay, that is what it is. Damn, dude. C-M-U computer science. Good job, man. Uh, congratulations, that, mu that must feel very, very good to just get that off your chest. Now you can be completely irresponsible for the rest of this school year. <laughs> um, so you probably don't really have that much to even stress out about. It's ED. Um, what do you, I'm, I honestly, yeah, that must be such a good feeling. Good job, man. Lafayette College with a full ride. Oh, yes. With oh, ED, ED as well. So the, now you now you know where you're gonna go. All right, that's awesome, man. Full ride, Lafayette College, and um, just uh, you know what? I'm I am kind of curious from a uh, uh, standpoint of just me trying to learn my audience. Are you um, like? Do you have a major that you are sort of thinking of uh, for your like for your college studies? 
Uh, I'm getting the sense that most of you guys are pretty much science and engineering. Uh, oops, not Lafayette. Uh, and I'm just trying to figure out, um, I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> like if I'm right or wrong. I know very little about this college. Let me go. It's been around for a really long time, actually. 1826. Okay, so it's like a, it's, it's been, it's been around since uh, in, in Pennsylvania for a long time. Let's see. And then the major, uh, the most, okay. Social sciences is pretty huge. That's interesting. But then you get a lot of like the sciences over here. Oh, this is also pretty big. <laughs> Visual and performing arts. Cool. All right, and then the rest of this is probably not that useful. But yeah, I was just kind of curious what kind of school, uh, what kind of kids it tends to attract. Anyway, uh, Latos, Luis, not sure how to, <laughs> LL, LL, uh, good job on Lafayette on uh, being done with that. You guys should enjoy the rest of your uh, senior years now. Have I read Glass Castle? Mm, that sounds vaguely familiar. Do I know? No, no, I don't know. ECE, electrical something engineering. <laughs> circuit engineering? Is it circuits? It might be circuits. Here, let's go look. Oh, electrical and computer. That's okay. <laughs> that it, I was not ready for the end. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. You can build. Uh, you can build machines for the future. Which, by the way, America really lacks people who actually build hardware, and that's like a major problem. Like America is just all just software people. <laughs> it's kind of fucked up, actually. <laughs> so, so being able to at least being at least being uh, in the vicinity of people who are who are making hardware, I think that's um, I think that's healthy for the country. No, I'm not in the states right now. I'm in Korea right now. I'm in. Uh, this is my uh, this is my office in Korea. It is. Uh, in Fahrenheit, actually, whether in Fahrenheit, it is 16 degrees right now, which is uh, eh, not the worst. It's not the worst, but it's not cool. Uh, it's not. It's not. It's not warm at all. <laughs> so it is, uh, or it's minus nine in Celsius. So kind of just uh, toughing it out right now. Yeah, I had to ru actually. I, I was wearing this thing. I rushed back home because I had some errands to do. So you can see my jacket. All right. Glass Castle. How come this sounds vaguely familiar, though? No, it's like, I don't even know this person's, I don't even know uh, Walls. I don't know Walls. She's a columnist for MSNBC. Shows how much I pay attention to <laughs> to <laughs> mainstream media. Um, I guess her like her beat is gossip, so that's really not my thing. So I guess that's why I don't know her. Okay, yeah. I kind of like this name, Half Broke Horses. I'm kind of imagining the Half Broke Horses being like having money enough for um, Chipotle, but not for uh, Shake Shack. <laughs> so, they're, so they're half broke. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, sorry, that's a uh, joke to myself. Uh, ah, interesting. At least it's not Alaska. Yes, that is a way to reframe <laughs> that is the way to reframe uh, my suffering. And then if somebody else here actually lives in, a, uh, in Alaska, you'll be like, well, at least it's not the North Pole. And then if somebody here is from the North Pole, will be like, well, at least it's not Mars. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so there's always, there's always that. 
Um, where, uh, it, you know what I think is, um, um, kind of like tangentially related is this idea that human beings adapt to wherever they are, no matter what. So for you, if 16 degrees sounds crazy, right? Like for us, it's not necessarily crazy. It's only crazy if 16 degrees is not common for us here. Um, and it reminds me of something I read. I think it was like Norway or Sweden or one of the, uh, one of the like uh, Nordic countries where there's a saying, apparently, I read this on Twitter. Um, there's a saying that uh, goes like this. There is no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. And, uh, you know, I think, I don't know, it's pretty catchy. Um, and I really like the idea that there is no such, there is, uh, there is no such thing as bad weather because um, personal angle here. I kind of hate it when people tell me, oh, it's raining, I can't go out, or I won't go out, I'm too lazy to go out. And I get it, obviously, I'm, I'm old too. <laughs> like, you know, we get lazier when you get older. But, uh, but like, also, no. I mean, who cares if it rains? Just protect yourself from the rain and just go out. <laughs> like, there's no reason to not go out if you want to do something. So, um, uh, yeah, it's something that I that I think uh, applies to a lot of situations, not just uh, not just weather. Yeah, uh, and that is true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Only water clothes can be exp uh, expensive. Um, you can you can figure out, but there's inexpensive ways of of setting up your kit as well. Uh, when I was a when I was a high school student, I had my I had my ways for Chicago, uh, which is a very cold place. Uh, you recommended the book and thought... Oh, no, you were recommended the book and you thought it was iffy. Yeah, I mean, like, I will be totally honest. Uh, I probably... if From a scale of 0 to 10, my interest level in a memoir by an MSNBC gossip columnist who probably had some interesting experiences growing up Probably, but with literally just knowing only that, and I know nothing about this person, just knowing that only, my interest level is from zero to 10. <laughs> it's like 0. 0. 0.13. Dude, it is very low. I would probably not. Now, it depends because this is the way I actually end up wanting to read a book. If I hear about a book from multiple people, from multiple sources and there, you know, and different people, I have different levels of trust in their judgment. So if it's all people whose judgment I don't really trust, whose taste I don't really understand, then I weight that differently. But if I hear it from multiple people, then um, I'll start like kind of poking around and looking into it. So uh, another, this is actually, um, this reminds me of another little uh, not a saying this time. This is not like a Norwegian saying. This is just like a little trick or like a little, um, um, I don't know if it's a life hack, but I can't think of the right word for it, but I'll just call it a life hack. In life, especially if you're surrounded by other like kind of academic or intellectual or art artistic people, you end up getting recommendations for movies, for books, for things all the time. And there's no way you can keep up with the, all of these recommendations. So... Uh, one of my friends has this filter, which is I will only look at a book if I heard it three times. But if I do hear it three times, then I will definitely at least look at the book <laughs> so or the movie or the whatever. Right. Uh, so that's like his rule for himself, which I think is a is a pretty uh, it's a uh, the idea of it, I think, is really is uh, is right on the money. You don't want to be just constantly kind of over promising that you're going to look into like if somebody recommends you something and they want you to look at it, it's like, well, I have a rule. You know, you can like block them. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can like push them off you from trying to be overly aggressive with their recommendations. So I think that's a useful um, uh, little life hack there. So uh, 
Whereas I'm a little bit more straightforward about it. It's like, yeah, that doesn't seem very interesting to me, man. <laughs> and I'll just say Glass Castle. That doesn't sound that interesting to me. But who knows? If you, if, if, if any of you in the chat can pitch it interestingly enough, I may change my mind. In the South? I mean, I'm going to just guess Texas because Texas is a very, very, very large chunk of the South. <laughs> and and a lot of, yeah, it's a lot of people in Texas. So Texas is my first is my first go. Wordle has been pretty lit just uh, as a thing. So just saying, if you feel like you have no easy way of being uh, a participant in the uh, Discord server, I feel like Wordle is your starting point. If you don't know Wordle, I think I already played today's Wordle, so I, sh I don't want to like, right, I'm not going to, oh yeah, you can't, hmm. if I do this, the answer actually comes out, but basically play Wordle, share your Wordle score, get involved in the server. And then, sh yeah, share your results. So that's uh, that's a thing. The other T state, Tennessee. Hmm. Wait, Jay, you're the one who got into CMUCS? Okay, so <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess, huh? I wonder how many Tennesseans, 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 I don't know. Uh, I wonder how many people from Tennessee, I can't, I, I can't think of the word for it. I can't, uh, I don't, I wonder how many people from Tennessee actually watch my videos. Um, I also bet there's not that many, com <laughs> there's not that many um, CMU admits in, uh, in Tennessee. I'm not getting the vibe that it's a very sort of engineering oriented uh, place. I just think of music mostly. Oh, New York. Oh, I should take uh, Soul Picks. I forgot to. I forgot to update. Uh, I've just been so busy ever since I got to Soul. I've like been so busy. I just have no presence of mind right now. Hmm. Oh, another easy thing for some some of the more bookish uh, of you guys. If you are sort of uh, bookish, but you haven't, uh, you don't really have people to read together with. And I don't mean reading the same book. I just mean read with and hold yourself accountable. Um, I recommend joining the team um, book readers, which is down here. Oh, shit. And you, I just realized I'm not even showing my screen. My bad. So team book readers, which is down here. Uh, earlier, I was trying to show you my Wordle, which was uh, apparently I didn't show it to you. So this is where I was. Now I'm down here. Uh, so if you join team book readers, uh, there's actually some people who are sharing their books that they're reading. And every three days, every three days, there's a, um, there's a little reminder like, uh, to to post your reading progress, basically. So come and join. What's my go-to starting word for Wordle? Uh, oh wait, there's multiple things. Uh, let me let me start from the top. Latos, uh, Latos, LL. Uh, you've wondered why people score lower on reading the math. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, not everyone. Um, it's a uh, but, but I uh, it's a. Uh, It's interesting because I think the kinds of kids who are on Reddit and YouTube are not the kinds of kids who like read Shakespeare grew, growing up, uh, are not the kinds of kids who w would go to the theater and watch plays, are not the kinds of kids who are like writing poetry and kind of publishing them. You know, like the kids who are on Reddit, on YouTube, on maybe even TikTok, just like looking for tips, are kind of the more like practically oriented kids, right? The sort of like, 
I have a task. I need to get good at it. Let me figure it out. I'm going to go online. I'm going to look. I'm going to look it up. What's the What's the hack? Right. It's. I think you tend to get the personality of people who are more kind of like practically oriented, less artsy oriented, on channels like uh, Reddit, YouTube, I guess Discord. Uh, also, a lot of this intersects a lot with the gamer community, but gamers do tend to be more. Um, uh, more male, not all, obviously, uh, more male, but like, you know, men just, uh, male, uh, I think there is, I don't remember this, how, how big of a difference there is statistically, but uh, male students tend to do better uh, on math relative to their verbal skills, whereas w uh, female students tend to be the opposite. If I remember correctly, actually, I, had, I haven't thought about this in a long time, uh, so I actually don't remember <laughs> exactly the statistic, but something like that. So you get a little bit of that skew. I'm going to guess that, like, out of everyone who watches me, 70% uh, are male, if not 80, right? Um, I could actually, if you guys were all adults, I would be able to look it up on YouTube, but because you guys are generally younger, um, YouTube hides that data from me, so I actually don't know uh, uh, what your gender split is, um, which I, you know, that's reasonable. I don't think YouTube should just be sharing. YouTube slash Google, by the way, this is a Google decision, should just be sharing um, too much information. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to guess 70, 80% of you are male. I'm going to guess, uh, because I actually did a poll once and I was shocked by the results, I'm going to guess uh, based on that poll, uh, at least at least sixty percent of you are stem uh, and I out of the and out of the sixty fifty percent is actually just straight up computer science meaning thirty percent out of one hundred <laughs> is computer science so uh, which you know you guys are just a very stem heavy group so of course your math is higher of course your math is higher it's what you're good at and reading is just unintuitive. If you didn't grow up reading a lot, you, it's just unintuitive. Like, how do you get better at reading, right? Um, people just say, read more. But that's all those people that tell you to just read more. It's because they grew up reading a lot. And they, they're like, well, I read a lot. So you should read a lot too, right? It's kind of like a, it's like a fraternity, you know? There's like an entry cost. Like, to enter the group of, like, I want to make sure that you go through the same hazing that I do. I did. You know, I read a lot. I deserve my score. You didn't read a lot. You don't deserve. You don't deserve my score. Read a lot, <laughs> and you're gonna get better, right? And it's such a simple answer that it's just. And it's true. If you read a lot, you're gonna get better. It's just that, you know, you actually can kind of engineer a way to read better. Um, that a lot of the naturally verbally gifted people they they don't have to engineer it because they just read a lot growing up. So. Yeah, just be be aware that you know the Reddit, the Discord, the 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 YouTube. These kids, you guys tend to be more STEM y. All right, that's I think the big difference there. And yes, there are people who are flipped, who are much better at verbal than math. Yeah, they they exist. They're just not really on Reddit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they they do <laughs> they have a different kind of lifestyle. Ansar, 1480, and you got a 750. Oh, and it was a 50 point jump from your practice. Yo, that is, you, wow. So you pulled through very clutch on the on the day of the test. Yo, good job, and uh, I also am proud of you. So, uh, hope you can hope you can make something good with that score. What's my go to starting word for Wordle? Uh, I, if you um, if you kind of pay attention, I I used to do a bunch of Wordle streams, and um, you'll notice that I don't have a starting word for Wordle. I just I just um, I do random words all the time. Um, it's kind of I like I prefer it to be a little chaotic because it gets a little boring for me to do Wordle starting with the same word every single time. Uh, so, you know, I'll use very common letters like S, N, T, H, R, E, A. You know, I'll use those. Like right now I'm just thinking snare or I could think uh, trace or, you know, but I'll like, uh, uh, sometimes I'll just 
sometimes just for just for shits and giggles, I'll do something un not very useful, like chunk. Like U and K are not very useful usually. But I'll just do it for fun because I'll see what happens. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, that said, I mean, um, if you if you're kind of like stuck and you don't know you don't know what to do, um, the the way to get better at Wordle is just look at your analysis, okay? And this is like your general analysis. But then if you go to the next page, it kind of tells you over here on the right side what Wordle thinks are really good words to start with, okay? These are Wordle's like popular words or like optimal words. And then if you actually read, right? Um, for that, if you choose a word like scare, which uh, Wordle gives a score of 95, uh, you know, the number of solutions that you would expect is uh, 120. Uh, whereas I chose today, I chose snarl and the number of expected solutions. This is a prediction based on just randomized statistical analysis would be 144, right? Um, and then my actual solutions, not expected, but the actual solutions after my guess was actually I had 91 words remaining that could still f fit, whereas Wordle only had one uh, 57 words remaining. So Wordle has like the optimal word choices and it shows it to you afterwards. So you can kind of learn. And honestly, the first thing that everyone learns when they start doing this is they start learning, oh, it's not adieu. Adieu isn't actually that great. You know what's good? Wait, how do I? Do I just have to click like this? The the number one word on Wordle is slate, okay? Uh, slate, even though adieu is more popular, 8% of people choose adieu. Um, uh, in fourth place, 3% uh, of people choose slate. So yeah, uh, just to answer the question one more time though, I just randomly guess. <laughs> I, just, I just randomly choose a word that Usually, I try to include like a N or a R, or a, and I try to add a T or a H, and like a A or a E. I use those letters, and I just make it up. I have never used snarl before, for example. Alice, uh, super score uh, scores for all sections of both tests, or only best session. Uh, only the best section because, well, there are, I think there are, like, the, the regulations, the, the, changing, the changing environment is so fast, that I, and I don't really pay attention to college requirements because I'm not, like, I'm just going to make this disclaimer. I always make this disclaimer. I am not a college consultant. I don't really, I sort of hate the idea of, like, studying colleges just to get better at getting into one. I think... I have a sort of idealistic view that I've just had ever since I was a kid. Like, I'm just gonna work on me. I'm gonna be the best, uh, insert adjectives, X, Y, Z person that I can be, right? You know, so if, if you consider yourself X, Y, Z, if you consider yourself um, intellectual or um, motivational or, um, teamworky or whatever right like whatever the whatever the heck view you have of yourself of you, of the person that you are and if you just try to maximize those traits of yourself like what happens is that as long as you're not an asshole as long as you're a decent person right the people around you will always start vouching for you they will like you they will want you to succeed and then you're going to have an organic sort of push a wind in your sails where people are on your side and they're supporting you and you learn to make allies. And I think the kinds of people that sort of like analyze statistics for getting into this and that, I mean, sure, it works for them. You know, and I'm sure they can, you, can make, you can have a very successful quote unquote life your whole life that way. Uh, it's just that, you know, it's just, I just sort of hate that kind of thing. It's just, I just, I can't stand that kind of work. So long disclaimer aside, I basically don't study this stuff. That said, I can tell you what I know. Uh, when you super score the SAT, most colleges, you can actually choose exactly the which score you want to send. Okay, so um, it'll be fine. 
Like you only see, uh, they'll only see your best score. Uh, some colleges are a little finicky though. Um, and they kind of have more stringent requirements around how you submit it. So if you're going to super score a uh, test, it, at least they, they used to exist. They may no longer exist, but this used, to, this used to exist where they would have at least you send all your scores for those two tests. You know, that I don't think that really exists that much anymore. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and then there's like one school or something, I think it was Princeton, that actually requires all, uh, <laughs> like all, all scores. And again, I don't remember if Princeton is the right one or if it really is just one school. But that said, I think a quick bit of research is warranted here. Um, which schools require all SAT scores? This is 2023. Okay, so apparently not one school because there's already a list there. Ah, just give me the list. Okay, here we go. All scores, Georgetown. Oh yeah, I remember this, UPenn. Oh, interesting. Oh, but we encourage entire testing history. Okay, okay. All test settings. Top universities, SAT, ACT, and subject test scores. Okay. Go George go Georgetown. I, I actually approve of that. <laughs> I approve of that uh, policy. Now the remainder seems to be, oh, Cornell. Wait, what? How come the, the Cornell was not mentioned before? Oh, Cornell also requires all test scores, apparently. And Rice. And a and And Wash U. Carnegie Mellon too? Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so I guess there's actually still a good chunk of schools that require all scores. Hmm. I was pretty unaware of this. So yeah, I'm kind of, it feels a little weird. It feels a little weird because I feel like some of this is wrong. I don't think, but um, so I think you need to just go and double check. And yeah, so Jay is confirming that you don't really need it. So <laughs> it feels a little off. But it seems like, honestly, generally speaking, there's not really many schools that require it. I'm going to just double check Georgetown. Test requirements. Official score reports. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yep. So yeah, you basically, uh, I thought Princeton used to have that policy, but I guess it's gone. So um, honestly, rest in peace. <laughs> I, I, I kind of miss the days of where we actually had high standards for the test and then you would just get measured and then it would just be part of your portfolio. I understand that there was this sort of sick, twisted counter current where now a whole test prep industry prop, uh, cropped up uh, like a little cancer on society and everyone started wasting a shit ton of time just prepping for a test without actually learning anything. <laughs> There's learning a bunch of hacks and it's like you aren't even getting smarter that way. So why, why are you spending all that time and money? Uh, which again swings back to my original point that I think you really, at the end of the day, you just want to be measured for who you are and then whoever likes you, you just go with them. But then that's not the end of the story. At that, at that college, at that place that you go to, continue to just be the best person that you can be, keep working on yourself, keep growing, and then whoever likes you, you go with them. And it's like, I mean, sports are the same way. I mean, just life is just, you know, you, you make your opportunities, but the opportunities, good opportunities come to good people, you know? So just, just be good. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to, I don't, I don't want to like overcomplicate this whole process. It's just, if you're a good person, if you're good at what you do, people, people will slowly, it may take a while, but people will figure it out. People will notice. So just 
Do your thing. Uh, Latos is saying, oh, comp, comp plays. Comp plays. Oh, uh, you're a gamer? Cool. Uh, 100 points. Reading score only, 100 points. That's amazing. I'm assuming reading actually means reading writing, but still, that's a, that's an amazing jump. And seven town on English, that's super, super good, dude. I'm very proud of you. I'm glad that I could have been part of that process for you. And um, good luck with uh, the next step in your journey, which I guess is going to be AP tests and then, uh, and then college applications. AP calc, only two women and the rest are men. What? <laughs> that is really extreme. <laughs> Dude, that is so extreme. I don't know where you live, but whatever place that you... That is so extreme. Holy crap. Um, uh, <laughs> my school was not that extreme. I mean, we had, plenty of, we had plenty of girls in our math classes, and we had plenty of guys in our English classes. That is so strange. Um, uh, yeah, I wonder... Yeah, that's... What what a vibe that is. Uh, really? In my AP Lit class, I mean, granted, my high school was kind of an overachieving high school, you know, especially for public high school. It was a very overachieving high school. But for our AP Lit, there was, I don't want to say names, but I'm like there was the A, there was J, there was Ma, M, I mean, <laughs> there was E, there was um, M, the other M. There was, uh, well, there's me. I'm already think I'm at seven dudes already. Um, at least, yeah. And AP Lit was not a big class. I think we were almost 50%. Guys were almost 50% in my uh, in my AP Lit class. Now, that said, we, uh, we are a little unusual because as a public high school, like it's unusual for there to be two Harvards Two Stanfords. Uh, I was Chicago. One Caltech. Uh, one Duke. Uh, uh, I, um, there's more, but I'm forgetting. <laughs> Do we have a Yale? Uh, no, we didn't have a Yale. Um, they went to Yale for law school, not for not for college. Uh, yeah. So we had like we we were pretty we we're. We're solidly overperforming public school, uh, so you know you you had a lot of like overachievers and like you, you know so th that kind of makes it like like naturally you start like for example if you took the cut of our high school and um, and um, and tr try to make a differential calculus class out of our high school. Probably the differential calculus class would have been, wait, is differential calculus the right word? Differential calculus? No, it's not. Uh, I was thinking of uh, multi factor, multivariable. Yeah, I was thinking multivariable. So like if you took my high school class and tried to make a multivariable calculus class, I bet that class would have been like 80% male maybe 90 percent. actually i'm trying to think of one girl from my high school class that would have been ner math nerdy enough to go into multivariable calculus um or analysis or whatever maybe one maybe one yeah i think there would have been one girl out of like maybe like a class of like eight or nine people that would have been interested in like a multivariable calculus class i think if i'm remembering you guys correctly uh, class of 2007, all right? Don't hate on me if you find this video. Um, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I would, uh, but like specifically for AP Calc, AP Calc was, you know, kind of just within reach for us. So I guess that's why we were like half-half. So yeah, just to answer your question, I did go to U Chicago, and, uh, and my high school was pretty good, I would say. So I was very lucky to be in my high school. Um, very, very grateful for my high school experience. Oh, dude, I cannot believe it's already almost 1.30. Guys, I'm going to have to go pretty soon, but I do want to go through this. Um, I do want to go through my, uh, uh, my channel list real quick and then make a quick announcement.
Oh, dude, I'm, dude, I'm so behind. My God, I'm like missing it. <laughs> uh, well, people have been pretty active in the SAT results channel. Um, there's this idea that I've been thinking about, which is basically um, like a role, a role for verified verified SAT scores. Um, but I'm just like, for example, it could be 1500, 1550 and 1600, right? You know, so you could have verified SAT scores. Uh, but uh, I, I, like I've been kind of like hesitating to roll it out because I feel like it might uh, change the vibe uh, of the server. Ah, that's not the real worry. The real worry is I'm just trying to figure out how to do it. I think it will have a positive influence on the server, but I'm just not sure how to really do it yet. So if you have opinions about that, just let me know what you think uh, about like having verified SAT scores. I actually kind of have a placeholder one. It's not being used right now, but it's like SAT verified or admit verified. So that actually currently exists. I just haven't really rolled it out yet. Same thing with app results here. You know, we have a like, I, again, I haven't really done it. Like Milan, I know from a year ago, he, he got into Harvard last year. Uh, so I actually could just click on admit verified and give him that role because I know that he's actually at Harvard right now. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm like trying to figure out like what's the right way of doing this. And so if anybody has some good ideas for this, just let me know. Okay, so that's basically the whole server. I mean, we kind of went through all the news and uh, good chats, guys. Uh, I think I'm gonna go because I do have a very full day today. Uh, I have a lot of things to get through. So I'll see you guys in the next stream, which will probably be, probably be, probably, probably, <laughs> probably be, uh, 2 p.m. my time instead of 12.30 p.m. my time, which is an hour and a half later than usual, okay? Um, so that is, um, it's a worse time for some of you guys, I understand, but given my work schedule, I cannot, uh, I cannot do the current schedule, so sorry about that, but my next stream will, uh, yeah, the, 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 the hour will be adjusted. And final announcement, uh, I have yet to write this down, but I want to do a finish one book challenge starting, uh, uh, actually today, I want to uh, write that out and, um, and, and get that going. So during winter break, if you want to join a book reading challenge where you choose any book of your, like any book of your desire, of your, of your, um, of your heart's desire, uh, you just choose it and um, and challenge yourself to finish that book over the winter break. Um, you can join this challenge. I don't have a clear idea of what rewards there should be. It's actually really fuzzy for me. I kind of just want to do it for the fun of it, but I don't know. I'm open to reward ideas as long as somebody says something that I think makes sense, but it's that part of it is a little fuzzy in my head. So if you have feedback there, let me know. Okay, I'm going to go out now, but until next time, uh, keep on learning, keep on growing. Peace out, guys.